Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. I'm going to be starting some more videos that are not just coding related but also just discussing my experience in the industry in creating code and all kinds of things like that. So today I'm going to be talking about should you learn UXP. UXP is Adobe's newest idea for coding and replacing CEP extensions as we knew them. I've made lots of videos about UXP over the years and of course if you're not familiar with it, like I just said, it's replacing CEP or what we would call extensions, where you go to window extensions and choose a product which has a UI, but also does functionality inside of whatever Adobe program you are using. But they're updating it to a newer framework, which actually runs a lot faster called UXP. But there are lots of things we're going to discuss today about the pros and cons of that upgrade. And today in particular, I'm going to be talking more about UXP for Premiere Pro. There's already UXP out for things like Photoshop and InDesign, but with the newer UXPs, uh, I'm much more familiar and involved with, so I'll be discussing that. But should you actually start learning UXP, or should you put off on spending all your time doing that? Like, is UXP ready for you to convert any of your existing plugins or tools over to a UXP tool, or is it not? Today, I'm going to discuss a lot of my thoughts and personal experience on this subject, so let's begin. So you might be thinking, if you've watched my other videos on the subject, should I learn UXP? Well, of course, because you've made videos on how to do it in Photoshop, in Premiere even, and very recently made a lot of specific UXP tutorial videos. And if somebody's teaching it like me, you should probably learn as well yourself to get ahead on the newest Adobe stuff. But it's not really that simple, and what I would say is, to put it simply, you should start learning UXP and learning about UXP, but you should not put 100% of your energy into it. I personally, at least in regards to Premiere UXP, have been learning and teaching for months now, as you have been able to tell by my videos, and I've even tried to create some products to be ready for UXP. But through this process, I've actually found a lot of limitations and issues with it. While UXP offers a lot of the functionality and things that we could do previously with scripting and extensions, there are still way too many limitations that would allow you to convert any of your previous products over to UXP fully. Now, there are probably exceptions to this. If your thing is very simple and does very simple uh, automations, then you can probably get away with porting it. But if you've made something that's probably more than a thousand lines of code and does multiple features, you might want to back off from UXP for a little bit. Now, for full disclosure, Adobe have reached out to me about UXP. I was invited to the pre-release, which was a long time ago at this point, and they've had continued events creating updates and things for it. And they've also asked me what is going good with UXP so far for Premiere and what kind of things could we improve. And I don't get paid by Adobe or anything for providing this feedback or being part of the UXP early group. I do it because I want to make sure that all of the things that were possible previously in scripting and CEP type stuff is also going to be possible in UXP. Especially because UXP is still in the beta stage for Premiere, so I want to make sure that I do everything I can to test things out and make UXP as best as it can before initial release to make sure everyone can convert their things appropriately before they're sort of pushed out into the past. And if you followed closely in some of my previous UXP videos, I went through the guide and I created things and noticed that a lot of things were missing or not integrated from CEP. And I was also incorrect in some of those things. For example, being able to import project items or clips into the timeline or sequence, I said that that was not yet supported. I was incorrect in saying that, I'll say that now. But there are also many other things that I tested out which are physically just not possible. Even just a few of them I can name off the top of my head that I've noticed are CSS, for example. In CSS related things uh, for UXP, regarding opacity, there is only 1.0 and 0. You cannot have any in-between opacity values, so if you wanted to have, say, a simple button that goes from like 50% opacity to 100%, it's impossible. It's either fully opaque or not. I've also pointed out some other things to them, and they say they will get to them eventually. And of course, you might just say, well, yeah, do that. Continue to tell Adobe which things are missing, which things are broken from the UXP environment as are, as are now. And that is what I continue to do with myself and other developers as we test out things. 
Um, but one very important thing to realize is Adobe is also a huge company and only has so many people working and they have a lot of different products and priorities. And you have to also realize that Premiere UXP is still in the beta phase. It's a very early thing, so it's not going to have a ton of attention compared to some other more flagship features like AI in Premiere and other things for other products. And because of this, when I and other developers that I talk to request and submit some of these feature requests that are missing from UXP, uh, we'll we're told that they're going to be added to the list and the implementation will be sometime after the initial release of UXP and we don't even know when that's going to be. So they're still working towards the non-beta version of UXP. So when you download Premiere, you'll be able to simply use UXP out of the box, no beta version. Um, and that will be the initial release, which is, as I've said, already missing a lot of features that I and other developers have noticed. But then sometime after that, in some future update, they will then start working on any of the feature requests that developers make. It seems that there's not necessarily a roadmap to make CEP and UXP the same. They're simply relying on the developers to tell them what needs to be done. So if you're a developer, please participate in the UXP process so we can make it go as smoothly as possible. And we can maybe safely assume Premiere UXP will be released in 2025, just the initial one. And then I'm not sure how long after that each update will take, but according to, you know, major releases for most of the programs, we're looking at every four to six months. So it's really important that we just send a, a batch load of feature requests and get them all implemented as soon as possible. So I think the, the best way to sum all this up is that UXP is coming eventually. We don't know when, and we don't know how long it's going to take to implement all the features that us developers are requesting. And this is, again, especially referring to Premiere at this point, but this could apply into the future for like After Effects and other apps. But in that case, keep making your CEP extensions, especially if you've just started one and you think, oh, we'll see, our UXP is coming soon. Should I work on this project? Yes, you should. I think you're safe to work even at the very beginning stages at this point. Um, but at the same time, also experiment with UXP. Make sure you're familiar with how to set things up and what is possible in the current moment so that way you have a foundation and as they slowly release uh, more and more features that we need you can slowly just pick those up on top of your initial knowledge of uh, UXP that you have. And the best thing I've learned to see what these limitations are and how to practice getting better at UXP is to take one of your CEP projects from the past and then convert it to UXP and port it yourself and find out what's missing and not just like scripting things, but other CSS and design related things that are also possibly missing. And then if you f find this problem with it, then tell Adobe and let them know so they can uh, add it to their list. And again, it seems like a lot of the missing features and stuff, they're relying on us developers to tell them what's missing and what needs to be done. So it's, it's really up to us to be in early and tell them what's up um, and, you know, Go through feature by feature and tell them what's not working for our current projects and then from there just go and expand and expand so thank you for watching this video guys i hope you enjoyed that's all of my kind of insight i've learned from the whole process since 2013 at this point of creating scripts all the way to uxp and should you learn uxp or not again it's really a kind of a thing you should be familiar with, but don't put all your eggs in that basket. Don't put 100% of your effort into UXP until it's actually ready. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe down below. We'll see you guys next time.